that in the middle of all of this is a very, very, very silver lining to a, a, a climate cloud, uh, which is loads of technical consulting, um, loads of advice, um, and for which people will pay a huge amount, and uh, whether they go ahead with your ideas or not. Um, I happen to think that the cost of all of those wedges, sorting them out, it will be at least $40 trillion, not the $10 trillion that the Stern report said, at least $40 trillion of new spend over the next 40, uh, 20 years, $40 trillion. Most of it has an easy payback period, so it's not an actual cost to society, because it saves itself, it pays for itself more than pays for itself. It pays itself back in about seven years, and then you're in plus. So, uh, so this is a tremendous market. We're right in the middle of it with buildings technology. This is a very exciting time of new innovation. The, 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 there is no limit, really, to human ingenuity. And we are talking not just about re-engineering building controls inside an old building. We're talking about nothing less than building the future of Australia. And I think that's a very exciting thing. And you know, people have been talking to me in ARBS about the challenge of talent. Uh, which is why, of course, we've got the World Skills Australia teams downstairs. There's a competition we're going to look at. Uh, they're already working hard uh, in, with new ideas, new innovation. And this is part of a scheme to draw new talent into the industry. And I would say this, that as the industry begins to see itself on a mission more than just as a business, as the industry becomes seen from the outside in uh, by the younger generation as a, a very innovative and exciting place that's important and significant, I believe you'll see the talent that you need. This afternoon, we're going to talk to, what, I don't know how many hundreds of, of people will be here in this room that with an average age of 15, 16, 17, 18. And why are they here? They're here because they're interested in construction. They're here because they're interested in the future of rebuilding Australia. Uh, they, they are potential recruits for this whole industry. And as we position um, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the purpose and the, uh, the values, I believe that you'll see the commitment that you need. In the UK, it's uh, truly shocking how motivation has changed. I'm not sure what's happening in Australia, but I suspect it's fairly similar. 90% of 30 to 40-year-olds in my country now want to leave conventional business jobs. 60% of 25 to 35-year-olds feel unfulfilled. 90% of 25 to 35-year-olds are looking for higher purpose. Most of them are having a midlife crisis at the age of 18. One of them is my oldest son. He's, uh, he got, uh, he's just got married, got a, a fantastic job with a, a very exciting dot-com company. It's growing sort of 100% per year uh, and all the rest of it. So I phone him up and say, hey, how are you doing, John? He said, all right. How's the job going? 16 weeks into new job. How's the job going? Oh, it's okay. Oh. Pause. I'm thinking of downsizing and getting a life. This is his first job. <laughs> he's had four Pay packets. <laughs> my friends, my friends, I can tell you that he's part of a global generation. I teach at London Business School. I teach at uh, the European School of Management and Technology. I teach at the Indian School of Hyderabad. I've taught at five or six different business schools on MBA programs, executive MBAs. I can tell you, number one career priority for people in Australia, Japan, uh, Europe, and America is Work-life balance, number one. Number one or number two, it's getting a life. Put your hands up if you've recently had a conversation about getting a better balance in your life with someone that you love. Put your hands up. Have a look around. My friends, I don't want to be rude, but you are a little older than the people in MBAs. A different generation. And you are also caught up in this conversation. I assure you, that the rising generation different. Put your hands up if you know what I'm saying is true, that in your own family, you have children who have different career aspirations and standards and expectations than you did. And you're going to pull these people into your industry. I tell you this, they will come if you can show them a purpose. They will not come simply to earn money. They will come if you can show them a reason why they are going to do something important. They will come to save Australia and build the world and have fun and innovate and all the rest of it. But they come because there's a purpose too. They will come if they're treated with dignity and respect, yes. And they will also come if we treat them as whole people and understand that they have a life outside of corporate real estate or domestic real estate or building high-rises. And what is this life about? It's about making life better. 
It's about rebuilding a better world. It's about reducing our carbon footprint. It's about improving the, the air quality for people in buildings. It's about making spaces that people enjoy going to work in. It's about saving companies money. It's about being efficient in what we do. It's about creating a skyline that future generations will be ecstatic and proud of. Um, and, it's, and, uh, and it's about creating uh, a better world for tomorrow's people. And that really is what it's all about. And that's why I'm so excited by what you're doing. Because while some people who are in this group this afternoon may look at the exhibition downstairs and say, that's an awful lot of technology, but I'm not an engineer, uh, I hope that all of them will see that what they're looking at is not technology, but they're looking at a future and a brighter one. Thank you very much. Thank you.